All right, so this is part two of a four part video series that I put together for y'all. I wanna help you begin your journey of becoming a superior man. I put a lot of emphasis on you becoming a superior man because society does the opposite. Society pushes you to become mediocre. And if you look around, like men are soft nowadays. You know the saying, nice guys finish last. <laughs> now, don't get this conflated with like being a kind, polite person, right? But I'm saying being nice, right? There's a, a term called nice guy syndrome. It's really some bullshit, right? It's like being a pushover. It's always agreeing with everything. That's a yes man. But see, they want you to be docile. They want you to be safe, harmless, just so they can put your ass to work and you don't question them. You don't say nothing. You just be a good boy. Good boy working. That's the culture. That's what they create. They're creating thousands, if not millions of people just like that. They want a bunch of safe, sterile, quiet, nice guys. They don't want people to challenge any kind of authority. They look at you crazy for challenging authority, but you should challenge authority if it doesn't align with your values because everybody should have at least five core principles. And if somebody is presenting something that goes against what you live by, you should question it. Have a conversation. There's nothing wrong with that. This is part two of the four part video series. Now, if you haven't seen part one, you're missing out. The link's down below. Go and watch it. Part one was about the mindset, right? Your mind state. I will help you completely calibrate the way that you think, the way that you see the world. The number one thing that I implore you to do is to develop discipline. You do that by having habits and routines or rituals every day. As long as they are beneficial to you, and it's even better if it makes you a little bit uncomfortable. If it's something you don't really want to do. If you got to get up extra early and go outside and run or whatever, is always going to make you a stronger person. And these things will make you disciplined over time, but you gotta keep doing it. Gotta put in the reps. I also went into super intelligence. This is eternal quest, a lifelong odyssey or journey of you doing everything that you can to be better, to be smarter, to be stronger, the whole nine, right? The human brain is a magnificent piece of technology. It does not have to decay, but people let it decay or atrophy by not using it. If you ever listen to Rest in Peace to Charlie Munger or Warren Buffett, these are old ass men, like 90 and some change. If you close your eyes and listen to them speak, they sound like young men. They sound like spry, normal, vibrant human beings, right? They don't sound like old guys. Why? It's because they're reading all the time. They're doing a lot of things that's engaging the mind. It's creating more neurogenesis. Even at an old age, you can create new neurons. They used to think that the neurons that you're born with, it's a wrap, that's it. Most people don't do anything to create new neurons, but we're gonna change that. Y'all are not gonna be in that category. These are all things that I broke down in the first video, so you have to go check it out. I also went into emotional resilience. This is so important. People that are emotionally fragile or emotionally volatile, they yell. They're triggered easily. Now, don't get it twisted. It's okay for a man to feel a certain way about some external stimulus, something that somebody said to you or did to you, right? You can express that. I didn't appreciate when you said X, Y, Z. I low key felt a little bit disrespected. I don't think that that was your intent, but I wanted to talk to you about it before I just drew assumptions, right? You can have these conversations with people. Confrontation, people run away from it, and that's weird. I run towards it. And don't get it twisted, a confrontation doesn't mean a fight. It doesn't mean that. It means confronting outstanding issues so we can resolve it and have peace. That's what a man should do. You don't avoid situations, you go to it. We get into that in a real deep capacity with the emotional resilience uh, component to the first video, okay? Now, keep in mind, I'm just barely skimming the surface on what I'm giving y'all in my mentorship program, okay? Which starts in January 1st, the complete mentorship program. We will have class after class on all of these topics, breaking down exactly what it is, breaking down why it's important, breaking down tactics for you to get these attributes and add them to you, who you are, increasing your aptitude as, of a man. So these are all in the first video. However, in the actual mentorship, which you should be on a wait list for, you're gonna really get taught these on a high level. All right, not just me, I'm bringing experts along as well. With the program that I put together for y'all, you're gonna be hearing me breaking down my anecdotal experiences and knowledge on all of these things. I'll never talk about or teach things that I don't know about. However, I don't stop there. I got all of the sources, I cite all of my sources of the research that I have on 
all of these different topics and why they're so beneficial to you growing as a person. Y'all are gonna be so thorough at the end of this, it's ridiculous. And then we go into stress management. It's one of my favorites. Nothing or nobody can stress me out because I make stress my bitch. What I mean by that is I manhandle everything that I deal with. I control my reality. I'm like an alchemist. An alchemist is one of those divine scientists back in the day who can take a base metal and turn it into a precious metal. That's what we have to be for our own lives. You can complain, it doesn't help nobody. All it does is piss off everybody around you. They get annoyed by you and you're affirming negativity in your life. So you wanna take these experiences and these situations and recalibrate your thinking and how you look at it. I'm glad this happened because now I get the opportunity to become stronger at XYZ. Stress is your best friend. It's literally your best friend. I get into it this deep, right? Because my life, if you look up, look at all of the events in my life, a weak person would have laid down and died. But a strong person get excited about these challenges. Each time you're dealt with these situations, you become stronger and stronger. Once again, this is in the first video. We really get deep into these things. And I want y'all to remember this. The mentorship, we're teaching it. Like we're going into this in a high degree. Stress is your best friend, all right? And the last one that we went into is my favorite. I should change the name. It's called Ferocious Mindset. I should change it to Honey Badger Mindset. If y'all don't know what a Honey Badger is, Honey Badger is a little medium-sized little critter that will go out there and fight a rhinoceros, it'll fight a lion, it'll fight a cobra, it does not matter. And it is so relentless that these other animals are afraid of him. He's not even that big, but he's so ferocious. That's how you gotta be with everything in your life. Because if you're not aggressive about the things that you want and you feel like you deserve in life, who cares? Somebody else who's more aggressive than you, more of a ferocious and a hungry mindset than you, they're gonna make it happen for themselves. And you're gonna be sitting back being like, like how did he do it? Doesn't matter what level of intelligence you think you have over him. That person has an indomitable will and will not take no for an answer. That's how you gotta become. In video one, we get into that. We break all of that down and show you the tactics that you need to employ so that you have that ferocious mindset but you gotta have a high degree of confidence to even wanna get out and do anything. And we work on that too. All right, so, so, so check this out. Say we're in the gym together, right? And I'm coaching you through a lift and I'm trying to get you to do something that you don't normally do, right? Chances are, I've already gauged what you've been doing, right? And I know where you're at. I know your strength right now because that's my playground. That's like my passion. I love doing that. I've been doing it for a long time. So I know where people's at by watching them with their progressions. And I'm having you do something you may have never done before, right? You're like, nah, but I can't do that. I'm like, nah, trust me. You're powerful, bro. Like, I'll tell you why you can do it. Like, nah, because you did X, Y, Z for five reps. That means you can do this, that, and the third for at least two. I'll be shocked if you only got two, bro. Like, for real, right? I'm casting a spell on you, a positive spell, a good spell and then you'll go and hit it. Remember, I've trained people for a long time in the gym, right? And oh, when I stopped doing that as a profession, I still dealt with people like friends of mine or whatever that, was, that really needed to get in shape that I wanted to help out. I have so many people that I tell you like, yo, I had no idea I can do that. I'm like, I know, motherfucker. Because you have self-limiting beliefs, right? Y'all adopt the templates that's created and put out there. A template is just generally speaking. If you're generally that average person, then yeah, this is for you. A lot of people will be like, but the, the, the word average, there's average people, this, that, and a third. Okay, are you average? That's a decision. It's literally a choice. Of course, maybe everybody starts in a certain space, but does that mean you have to stay there? Absolutely fucking not, right? And the gym, and we, that's what we're getting into in this particular uh, module of this video is your body, is your, your fitness, your strength. The gym is a place where you can break out of being average. This day and age, a lot of people are working out and I love that, right? I still see people just moseying along. I see people just trying to maintain, which is bizarre to me. Build, grow. Everything I do is with a progression. So I structure my workouts in that way. But guess what? That's a very consistent thing in my life. It's training, it's working out, right? So if you get locked into that, you're doing that every day, that's the type of person that you become. So the way you do one thing is how you do everything. The gym is a place in which you can go do something over and over and over, being thorough about it. You're practicing becoming a thorough person. And the byproduct is 
you get in phenomenal shape and you look good. That's a win-win-win situation. It's so much of a no-brainer, it's weird that everybody's not on this, on this train. However, I don't care about everybody, I care about you. Because you're my squad, you're my people, you're here with me for a reason, so I got you, okay? We allies in this. You need to join the wait list right now because the, the big mentorship that I'm launching that will encompass all these things, the invitation is only gonna be available to the people on the wait list. I'm not here for everybody. I can't be, you know what I mean? You can't please everybody, everybody won't like you, all that shit, I'm good with that. Fuck them, if you're not with me, it's cool. Get out of here. But for those of y'all that's with me, that's been rocking with me, even the new people that just found me and you find value in the things that I'm saying, I'm here for you, literally. I'm big bro and I've always been that. I got the spiritual assignment of the Archangel Michael. Michael was God's most vicious warrior, uh, angel, the Archangel, the highest order of angels, right? Michael was after all of God's ops, like Satan, Shaitan, the devil. He forced him out of heaven and fucked his ass up, right? And Michael was a protector of the good people. I've always been that. I mean, my name is Michael, right? It's crazy. I've always been infatuated with like angels and angelic symbols. I got angel wings on my, my chest. I got angel across my stomach, an angel on my back. My organization, my nonprofit is called Dirty Angels. As I got older, I was like, damn, you are the Archangel Michael in a physical form. I've always been the guy, if somebody's fucking with somebody that I care about, I'm stepping into it. I never used to get into like any kind of altercations because of me. It was always because of other people. I'm always big bro, even if I'm younger. So I'm big bro for y'all too. Look, we live in a special time. We live in a time in which we have YouTube, right? I'm right here on your phone. You feel me? So you have access to me, you know? So utilize me, use me, I'm here for you. A person's life's mission, they have to define what that is. I know what mine is. Mine is service. I live a life of service. I live for other people. I live first for my family and my friends. Outside of that, I live for the people in my community. And that's y'all, I live for you. So as long as you treat me good, I got you want anything and I'll never let you down. So join the wait list to make sure you get that divine invitation to begin your journey of becoming a superior man. And I don't wanna discourage the ladies. Sign up too, cause some of y'all have to do the man shit anyway cause you ain't got no solid man in your life. And you learning what a superior man looks like through this program will give you the proper insight to know what to deal with and what not to deal with. I promise you, you're gonna know in this program. The superior mindset is everything that's why that's first next is the superior body that i'm going to help you construct you're going to become whatever avatar you want right you're going to become a superhero your body's going to become a weapon that's what i'm all about i give no fucks about somebody that lifts weights and all of this shit and looks strong but they're not really strong somebody that looks formidable but they're really a pussy they can't fight everything hurts they can't carry a bunch of shit right they're only good for the gym that's not what it's about we're doing this for life we're doing this to be a fucking conqueror at life, right? I look at everything like war. Every interaction is like a little battle. So I gotta make sure I am the most formidable in every situation that I deal with. That's what I want for you. And we start with that, with the body, with building the body properly. It gives you not just an impressive looking physique and really good physical health, but it gives you a balanced, healthy mental well-being. What do we hear so much of these days? We hear so much of people talking about their mental health. I don't relate to that. I do all of the things necessary to keep me mentally thriving. And a lot of that comes through actions of the body. First and foremost is training. Training is important. I don't train though. I overtrain. I remember when I first came on the scene on YouTube, a lot of people was in their feelings. They was all butthurt about me talking about overtraining. You couldn't really fuck with the principles behind my system, but they were just in their feelings because they saw a real formidable motherfucker, a dude that's really pure coming onto the scene and they ain't like that. I'm taking up their market share. I'm not here for their shit. I'm just here doing my thing. I wasn't even focused or even aware of all of these people, right? But everybody had a problem. They were making videos. This guy's crazy. You can't do this, you can't do that. I shut all the motherfuckers up with actions. I defied all of the societal norms in, in terms of gym culture. I'm also gonna tell you this, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. My overtraining protocol is not for everybody. Some people can look at the weights and be buff, right? Not me. I am a hard gainer. I gotta go harder, harder, do more, lift heavier, right? You'll find out once you start calibrating your training 
to the way that I have, like these Mike Rashid progressions with your primary lifts, you're gonna feel a sense of euphoria when you hit these heavy lifts, right? There's a couple reasons for that. You are activating your nervous system to a high degree because you could just do a lot of reps. It's not really challenging and your muscles will grow because of all of the cellular activity and the hypertrophy, right? But that's training yourself on a skeletal muscular system and not necessarily the nervous system. Your nervous system is where your strength comes from, tapping into that. Now, our species of human, Homo sapiens sapiens, has been on this planet for 100,000, 200,000 years, something like that, right? We have not evolved much since we first touched down, right? So our bodies is programmed for pleasure rewards and certain things like that, certain sensors in our brains to keep us doing certain activities. There used to be a time when finding food was very difficult, making these long journeys to find shelter was difficult, so on and so forth. So for man, we're programmed with certain chemicals that gives us certain stimulus that keeps us wanting to do things. And that main chemical that we all have is testosterone. Well, some of us have it. Some of y'all are kind of, you know, kind of lacking in that department, right? What testosterone does is it makes effort pleasurable. You want to go harder, right? It's an uphill battle. I know it is, right? That's why it's hard. That's why it's so glorious once you get there. But once you get to that, that hump and you get over it, you hit a tipping point. You will need to go heavy. You will need to push yourself. You will need to have a certain feeling after your sets, right? When you train with me, you'll know what it feels like. All right, this is how I'm supposed to feel after a workout. If you're just walking out the gym all easy, fast, like there's nothing, you ain't did shit. That was a warm up, baby. So we're gonna pre-exhaust your ass and we're gonna go hard. The primary lifts of everything that I do, we're there for like seven to 10 sets because effort will become pleasurable when you're on my program and my system. Now, effort being pleasurable is dope. That's what helps make you superior, not just physically, but mentally as well, spiritually too, right? Now, I'm not gonna say that just because a person works out, they're a good person or they're a solid person, but chances are, you know, it checks off a few things, right? It checks off the thorough department. It checks off the discipline department. It checks off the department of one loving themselves and caring about themselves. Because you can't really truly, truly love and care about somebody else if you don't really truly care about yourself. I'm not perfect. Sometimes I'll eat some junk food or snack or something like that. But I don't let my kids see me do that. You know what I mean? Because I know that's a slippery slope, right? I get up, I know the benefits of the, the training that I do. I know the benefits of the sauna. I know the benefits of reading stuff outside of school or work, right? I know the benefits of engaging in rigorous brain activity, right? So what does that make me do? I don't hoard that information for myself. I love myself so I apply these things to myself. I apply these to my children as well. When I meditate in the mornings, I meditate twice in the morning. I meditate right when I get up and I meditate in the sauna, right? In the sauna, I'll do a little bit of mindfulness meditation and I'll teach you guys all of that. But then I'll also do visualization, which is a form of meditation in which you are visualizing the life or the scenarios or whatever that you want for yourself. I do visualization for my children. You feel me? That's how much I love them, right? I have a high degree of love in my body because I love myself so much. So when you really love yourself, and love yourself is not just saying I love myself, right? Anybody can say that. That's just some, some sounds coming out your body. I wanna see what you're doing. How are you expressing love for yourself, okay? You gotta understand, it's a difference. I don't really give a fuck about most things that people say because it's just fucking talk, all right? Actions is everything. So remember that, all right? These things are important. You don't wanna be a person that's full of shit. Most people on this planet sucks. Most people are foolish. Most people are stupid, right? But not you. You here. I know I ain't stupid. And I'm not full of shit. And you tapped in with me. So you solid, like me. So you're here for a reason and I'm here for a reason. Look, the universe works the way it's supposed to. But just because the universe is working the way that it's supposed to, doesn't mean that you don't have any work to do. You gotta do work too. I'm here, right? I'm here and I put together a robust program for you. Now, 
What do you have to do? A couple things. You got to sign up, go to the, to the wait list right now, put your name on it so you can get an invitation. And then you have to pay to be in my mentorship. It's not free. Nothing in this world is free. There's a book that I really love called 48 Laws of Power. One of my favorite chapters is despise the free lunch, right? Never accept free shit from anybody. It's always with something. It's always connected to something. Me being who I am, when I'm traveling and I'm going to gyms or patronizing someone's business or service, a lot of times people want to do shit for free for me. I'm like, nah, I'm good. Nope. Let me pay for it. Cause I don't want to hear. I just want to use your service. I just want to use your products or whatever. I don't want to, you want to ask me to promote it, do this. I'm not here for that. That's a whole nother conversation. You got to talk to my business manager about that. And that's going to cost you a pretty coin. Actually, I need some equity, baby. You know what I'm saying? But that's not what I want. Let me pay you. So there's no hidden agendas. There's no ulterior motives. We're clean. We're clear. Okay. So be careful with free sh and free people value. Look, invest in yourself or don't. It doesn't matter to me. But those who invest in themselves, there's a lot that comes out of that. Okay. So anyway, these are the things that you got to do. I'm doing my part. You got to do your part. All right. Join the wait list right now to make sure that you get the private invitation to be in our community, in our collective, all right?